Hello everybody, it's Brad again. Today we're going to cover CAD models, importing a CAD model and translating and, and transforming the CAD model to get started programming. I've already got a program started, I'm ready to go. You may have things set up differently, but this is just to, to show you this, how to import in a CAD model and get started. So first, once we've got a program going, you've already selected your tip file, your probe that you want to use, you're, you're ready to go. File, import, and typically you're going to be choosing either a step file or IGES, depending on what kind of format you have. You'll notice that I have a lot of other versions available to me. Um, so I can import in a solid part file or a parasolid, CATIA file. Uh, a lot of other options. If you don't have those, then you can you can purchase a license from Hexagon to allow you to go right to SolidWorks or import in a solid part. Uh, most often, though, it's going to be step righteous. I'm actually going to be using a CAD file, and this is a PCDMS version of the file. So when you import in a step file and then you save your program, PCDMS converts that to a .CAD file, and so it translates it. Um, but that's the, the type of file that I have access to with Hexagon's demo block. So we'll, we'll pull in this CAD file. Nothing really need to do to that point. Um, but here it is. And you should already know, but to, in order to use a, the, the CAD model on your mouse, you can scroll in and out. You right click and you can drag. If you do both mouse buttons, that will zoom. Then if you hold the scroll button down, that will rotate. Now you'll notice that wherever you put your cursor, it's kind of tricky on this scroll. If you put your cursor over here, it's going to try to scroll to your cursor. So first, first time users, new users usually struggle with this, um, you, but you'll get used to it to be able to move it around uh, however you want to. You've also got your scale to fit button right here. You can also use control Z, which is pretty handy. You'll notice if you put your cursor over there, you can see it says Control Z is the shortcut. So you can do that. You've got this box down here, which is a quick option to rotate. So if I want to go top view, I can do that. If I want to look at the side view, I can do that. So that's pretty handy. You've also got up here under the, on the toolbar, a graphics view toolbar. So you can also look at different views. So top, top view, or maybe isometric. You can also look at um, possibly your CAD model does not have these dark lines on all the surface edges. So that was turned on. I'll turn mine off so you can see it, what it would look like. Maybe your CAD model comes in like this. So all you just come up here into your graphics view and come over and turn on your, your edges. Okay. You also can turn off the CAD so you can see the wireframe. If for whatever reason you got to see inside of the part, Another a new version or new option as the last couple versions is this transparency mode, which is pretty cool. Be able to see inside uh, the CAD, um, see how things are intersecting. That's pretty cool. Uh, uh, but I would probably come back and still program as, as a solid. Okay. Now, what I really want to show you was the translate and transform to move this tetrahedron. A lot of times when you import in your CAD file, this tetrahedron is either going to be off in space or it's on the wrong feature that you need your origin set to. And maybe it's rotated so the Z is pointing down or, or X or Y. Now, some people are going to say it doesn't matter. Your, your alignments will fix that, and that's true. I have found that if you get this right from the get-go, your programming is going to be a lot cleaner. Um, things are going to make more sense, and you don't have any kind of weird funny numbers especially if you're using a roamer arm. It's important to get this right from the get-go. It has a lot to do with vectors. And if you're not familiar with what a vector is, so every surface has a vector. You'll notice that as I clicked on this surface, see how it's pointing? That's the, the vector of that surface. So think of it as 90 degrees from whatever surface you're clicking on. So if I click here, notice it's, it's parallel or, sorry, normal to, the surface or 90 degrees or perpendicular to that surface so every surface has a vector if you don't do if you don't get your tetrahedrons correct uh especially on a roman arm your vectors will be off and it and it will it'll just cause you a lot of trouble so let's show you how to do this 
to get this move this tetrahedron or move the CAD model to match how you want it. That can be found in Operation, Graphics Display Window, Transform. It'll pop up another window here. Now, this allows us to translate or move or rotate. So either or. Um, I don't really get into this uh, specifier. I've never ever used this, so we'll, we won't touch on that. Um, and I don't usually do a, a new coordinate system. Just leave this, uh, do it the way I'm, I'm going to show you. So first, let's work on translate. So let's say that instead of this corner, we want this corner to be our origin. So I'm just going to click on the select button, leave these all checked, and just simply come over and just click near this corner. So I'm going to click on the top there. You can see that it updated or grabbed some numbers there. And then I just simply click Apply. Now, it's out of space, but I just control Z or scale to fit, and it brings it right back. So you can see the CAD model moved um, to this new tetrahedron. Or, well, the tetrahedron say the same, CAD model moved right to this corner. Now, uh, maybe you need to use this circle. So let's show you how to do that. Same thing. You're just going to leave this all checked. And you're going to click on the circle that you want kind of near the edge. So I'm going to click right here, and that finds the center of that circle. You can see it, it shows new X, Y, and Z, or Z say the same. OK, apply. And now it moved to the center. All right. Now, if you don't like anything, you can always just hit cancel. It goes back to the way it was. Once you hit up OK, now it's permanent. So let's go back into operation, graphics display, transform. OK, I like that the way it is for what we're for our program purposes. And that's probably the correct term for the drawing. Uh, there's lots of different things. Well, let's say that you need to do <clears throat> you want to be center. Basically, the Y origin would be the circle. The X origin would stay on this on this here. OK, so in that case, I would hit select. Now I'm unselect X, unselect Z because I don't want those to change. But my Y I want to change. So I'm going to come back up and select on that circle again. You can see that number update on the Y and, and click Apply. And now there's my new origin. All right. Again, let, I'm going to cancel that. So we get back to the way we were. Let's go back up in Operation, Graphics Display, Transform. All right. Now, let's say that that Z or was pointing in the wrong direction, or let's say I, instead of X being along here, I really want my X to be along this surface. Let's do that. This is really simple. You're just going to type in the angle that you want it to rotate. OK, so let's go back to the Z view. Uh, oops, sorry. Go that, that view there. OK. So I want to look at my top view. Let's go. And I want to be able to rotate this model up 90 degrees. So I want my X to be along this surface and then the Y be along this surface. So the easiest way to do that is just to type in the angle. You can do select. Uh, I find that this is pretty challenging and haven't quite figured out the right methodology to do that. If you've got it figured out, let me know. But the easiest way to do it really is just type in the 90, right? I'm going to put in negative 90 on purpose just to show you what happens. So I'm, I put in negative 90 because maybe I'm not sure which way it rotates. I, I hit apply. And it, oh, it goes oh, the wrong way. I actually want it flipped up that way. Not a big deal. I could cancel it and get out, or I can just type in 180 now and get it to go you know, the right direction. OK. One thing to go over on this rotation is to be sure to understand how this how it rotates. So you got to choose this rotate axis. So in the case that we just did or we're going to do is we're going to rotate about the Z and just flip it around there. OK, so let's do about Z. Let's just rotate it 90 degrees and you'll see what this does. Right. So this rotates about the X, Y, Z plane and and that that's good. Now, 
perhaps we need to flip the part and we're going to do let's let's say we're going to measure the bottom side of this part now my z is pointing down that's not that's not going to work so i need to get that z flipped up right so i'm going to now i'm going to either rotate about the y or about the z in this case it probably doesn't really matter let's just do about the x i'm going to rotate it 180. Right now you see that the Z is pointing up, but my origin, I need to move up here. So let's go back to select. And I really could just change the Z to that surface. Apply. All right. Now we're ready to go. We're ready to start measuring this part on the, maybe this is the, now I'm, I'm happy with how that is. I click OK and I'm ready to start programming. Don't forget to save. Remember with PCDMS, you always want to save early and save often. And, and now we're now we're ready to start programming. Second side of our program, because we couldn't get these bottom features. That that makes sense. I hope so. I hope this video is helpful to you. If you've got any questions, just leave a comment and I'll try to update the video or create a new video to answer any of your questions. If you have something specific that you need me to cover, uh, be be happy to do that. Just give me some details and I'll, I'll put it together for you. Hope you all have a great day. Take care.